On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the puppy blues. So what are the puppy blues? What causes the puppy blues? And just some general things on how to get through it and how you can get past that stage so you can have a wonderful life with your pet, with your dog. So welcome to the Woofy Show, the ultimate dog lovers digest. Meet your hosts, Brian and Magda, two dog lovers ready to help you be the best dog parent, unravel the mysteries of canine behavior and keep you updated on the latest trends in the dog world. This podcast has something for everyone. Get ready for heartwarming stories, expert advice, and a lot of laughs. Magda, if you want to start us off with what are the puppy blues? Puppy blues are a real thing. Yeah, they are. <laughs> a lot of people don't think they are, but it's it's just general feeling of overwhelm and yep. anxiety and guilt and sometimes even regret of getting a dog in the first place. Yeah, a puppy be more exact. Yes, a yes. puppy. It <laughs> normally happens to the first time dog owners. Yes. Uh, and yeah, I feel like the general reason of why it happens is because people like have a certain expectation in their mind yes. of what owning a dog will be like. Yeah. And they have this image in their head that it's going to be like picture perfect yeah. and this dog's going to love being hugged and yeah. all no, of that. No, that's true. That's what a lot of people, they expect. It's like puppies are cute. They're like little teddy bears yeah. and you want to hug them and cuddle them. But puppies don't like that. They're no. new. They're in a new environment. They want to just explore. They want to yeah. sniff things out, bite things to, you know, to, to see what it's like. And, and people don't know that. And I guess just a quick statistic, but I think it's 70% of new dog owners go through the puppy blue. So it's yeah. a lot more common than you think it is. So you're not alone. Don't feel like, oh, did I make yeah. a terrible choice? Most people go through this, ourselves including, to be honest. So. Yeah. And I've, uh, and I'm not sure why people don't really talk about it. I think maybe it's because there's a certain stigma and there's a certain shame behind feeling the way that we are feeling yeah. about our new I, dog. I don't think people like openly talk about regretting having children. I think that's probably pretty like not yeah. allowed. So maybe people have that feeling when it comes to dogs where it's like, it's okay. It happens, you know, like, yeah, because like you suddenly just feel trapped. You feel like your life is not what it used to be yeah. because now you have this dog and you know that there's certain changes that you have to implement into yeah. your life in order to accommodate this, this new life that you bring into your yeah. house. And it, it can be a, a massive reality check. And yeah, just well, a, I think we talked about it potentially in the puppy proofing your home, but um, I don't know if we did or not, but it was more about um, this, this puppy, this dog is a 100% reliant on you. Like yeah. That's it. And I don't, and I think people like forget that they think they can, especially as a puppy, they can play with them for, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And it's like, okay, I have work to do. You just go and do yeah. your own thing. And that's just not reality. Yeah. Like you said, it's just like not. You're going to have to be watching that dog yeah. all the time. Like it, it requires a lot more effort yeah. and. But short term effort. Yeah. Short term effort. Yeah. So what are some of the causes, I guess that like the, some of the main causes that cause puppy blues in people? Like what is it that puppies and like young dogs do in general that make well people yeah regret. so so as we kind of already mentioned puppies are not they they don't sleep all the time even no. though we want them to and that they, they're just like walking little piranhas like <laughs> yeah. wriggly little butts yeah. you know they they want to be out there exploring the world they don't like to be held usually yeah. uh so you know some of the things that can cause you to lose your mind is, for instance, if you are struggling with potty training your dog. Yeah. That's one of the things that that's people like probably struggle the all main the time. One. I think that's the biggest one because it that's the only one that kind of causes lack of sleep, which is like huge. And I imagine a baby's the same. I don't know from experience, but. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. you have to. Well, yeah, it I happens. I assume so, like, yeah. I the guess babies cry a lot. Parents have to wake up at God knows what hours in the yeah. night to feed that kid. Or, yeah, whatever. The baby, right? Yeah. Like, I think that's why mothers are always so tired. Yeah. But it's exactly the same with the dog. Yeah. Like, people don't realize that it is normal for a puppy to wake up in the middle of the night to, you know, need to be let out. Yeah, because they can only go... <laughs> There's a rule. I think it's like how many months they are plus one, and that's how many hours 
they can go yeah. without going to the bath. So if you get your puppy at eight weeks, you know, two months, add one. So every three hours, you technically have to take yeah. if 24 not, hours if a day. not more. Yeah. yeah. Depending on matter. if they were just, you know, overnight, maybe it's every, you know, not quite yeah. as often, but it's crazy. And a lot of people just want to throw their dog in a, in a crate or in their little playpen in another even room. even worse, they just leave their oh, dog... Yeah roam in the house when they're eight yeah. weeks old and they expect this dog not to pee or poo in, yeah. in a house. It's like you need to set your expectations and have this reality check that it's not going to happen. Yeah, and so and that's it is. It involves letting your dog out a lot and going out with the dog, not just like opening the oh, door yeah. and hoping for the best because you don't know if they're actually going to the bathroom. Yeah, and they could be out there having a party, you yeah. know, sniffing, eating grass, eating rocks, yeah. eating anything because exactly. it's a puppy. <laughs> and I mean, we went through that in the sense of we, I slept on the couch for like a week. Yeah. Because we had maple in like the living room kind of thing. And I think what happened is we actually started with her being in the crate in our bedroom. No, we did not. Did we not no, do that? No, because we had her, because she was having accidents. So it was on the floor. Because we didn't want to right. have any accidents. We weren't, it wasn't quite there. It was after like a couple of weeks. Right. But I remember I just slept on the couch. So then I can hear her a lot mm. quicker and then get up, let her out. I remember I was like, okay, you know what? We've had her for six days now. I mean, I thought it was going better than it was. And it was <laughs> like, I'm going to just, she had a crate in a playpen. So she kind of had both. So I was like, I'm going to leave the crate open and she can just be in like the little playpen area as mm. well. She wants to sleep in the crate. Cool. And she had like the worst diarrhea ever that night. I remember I woke up and it was all <laughs> over. We had a little, one little pee mat or whatever pad. Yeah. That thing was covered, beside it was covered. And just cause she just, inside the crate was covered. And it's cause we changed her diet, like, you know, after getting her. And I was like, yeah, nope, this is not no, as fast as happens. you think it is. Like I thought, oh, it's been a week. I don't think it was a week, but it's like, she should be learning yeah. now. Months, it's yeah. months. But what happens is that, you, you are taking that dog away from what's familiar. Yeah. Like the dog doesn't know you. They don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They're in this strange house. They're on a strange diet suddenly because yeah. it's not going to be exactly the same as what the breeder has fed them. Yeah. Um, so everything's just really strange and new. And we expect that dog to behave. Yeah. <laughs> you might expect a, an accident here. Or there. Do you remember when we had the carpet rolled up? Because yes. we're like, let's move the carpet instead of having it. Because it was one of those like really thick, like shaggy carpets. And we're like, let's just roll it up. And she like had a poo on top of the rolled carpet. Yeah. Remember, it was so funny. Yeah. At least like it was on the out, like the bottom of it. So it was easy to clean. But they don't like, know oh, any better. Little but, shit. <laughs> and I mean, I guess that goes into the next point too. That's on top of that. But it's a messy house. There's people that are very, I mean. Oh, we I, were like st that. I still have a problem with that. We were like that. It's <laughs> like, like it's oh, clean, clean, nuts. clean. And it's just not a reality, especially during the puppy months. Your yeah. house is going to be messy. They're going to have accidents. Try to keep them away from carpet. If you're carpeted everywhere, then buy a nice, really like good carpet cleaner that gets rid of odor. <laughs> I don't know. But it's going to be messy. They're going to yeah. throw up on it. They're going to poo on it. They're going to pee on all over the floor. They're it's, it's, they're going to eat their food depending Imagine on what it is. It'll make a mess. Imagine if you had a toddler without a, a diaper yeah. on, right? <laughs> God. Yeah, it, I it's, guess so. It's just it's what disgusting. it is. disgusting. But yeah, it's, I don't know why that's disgusting. A dog doing it isn't, but I guess because we have a dog. But yeah, and I think that's that's a thing that people will get stressed and just like, oh my God, I just cleaned Get well, an then you're going to have to clean again. Yeah. Like, it's just, it is a reality for everybody. Everyone yeah. goes through that. Yeah. So that's the thing. And and people feel feel bad and think that they're doing something wrong or that they're not raising this puppy yeah. right because this is what's happening and it keeps happening weeks after, right? But They've gotten months. that dog, but it, it takes a while. Yeah, and that's just what it is yeah. like that's what you sign up to when you decide to get a puppy yeah. and it's hard yeah no for sure mess is is annoying but it's just something you I do mean, and I now still struggle with the mess well like, it's more even of the now. shedding than well, anything. Yeah. not like the accident we were talking about potty training so that yeah. was more of the mess puppies don't shed no i know mess, but, but like you, yeah. you have to realize that once you get a dog your house will never look the same no. as Previous yeah. to that. Yeah. It might that one night you clean and, yeah. and the dog's asleep, but then the next yeah. morning, no. <laughs> back, yeah. to, back to how it was. Be like, didn't I? Didn't I clean? Yeah, put maple in a kennel, right? In the crate whilst I'm vacuuming, washing the floors, putting all the toys away, let her out. 
five minutes. Yeah. Toys Shit. are out. Yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> well, it's shedding season now. But yeah. yeah. So what's another, what's another kind of cause that people get from puppy blues or yeah. Cause of puppy blues where they feel. What causes puppy blues? Um, one of the other reasons is for instance, puppies biting and nipping at everything. Yeah. Teeth, yeah, like teething. Teething well. yeah. or not teething, just exploring with their mouth. Which is what they do. Yes, which is absolutely normal. Mm-hmm. And we have to be able to accept it and kind of train it out of yeah. them. Well, human babies do the same thing. They yeah. tea, they cry because it's painful. Yeah. Dogs it's honestly like talking about a toddler. Like it's yeah. so kind of the same. Yeah. Dogs. Just condensed. Also, yeah. Condensed. Everything happens faster. Yeah, exactly. But like all the time. Yeah. 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 So that's a big one. And a lot of people, it is, it's like when you play with them and they bite your fingers or they bite and rip on your clothes and it's not mm. that they are being destructive. It's because their, no. their gums are hurting their teeth are hurting. They need to bite on something to like relieve pressure sometimes. Mm. Or they're like, Hey, what's this? And that's what they do with their like litter mates. They'll like mm. bite them. And then and one of them will like other, that's make how a they noise play if it's too well. loud Yeah, and things like that. And that's just, that's just normal. And but some people find it hard. I mean, I mean, Maple, luckily she's a retriever, so they naturally have like more softer mouths, but it was still like, you know, oh, yeah. sometimes she'd get And for get some blood. reason, puppy teeth are like a lot sharper yeah. than standard Someone teeth. said they're like, like needle point because they they're so are. small and thin, so they can like puncture very easily. And I, even like, like I remember have, I got bit in the chin yeah. once because we were playing and I was bleeding and it was like, fine, like I don't get angry, but it was like, oh, well, that was my fault. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Or or like, too you excited. know, or I would like bring, because we used to take like videos of Maple of, you know, the, to highlight the stages of her growth. Oh, right? yeah, yes, yes, and yes, I yes. had to have her with me, like, and hold her yeah. and she would just wiggle around and like Try bite me in face. the face. Yeah, I remember that. There's and the other I'm one like, video where you're you like. Know what? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not her fault. Like no. it's completely me and she's just and that's not what they aware do. of what she's doing. Um. And yeah, we just have to ac- accept it. Yeah, like, I mean, don't sit there and leave your hand out and let them chew on it the whole mm-hmm. time. But it's like, it's just what they're going to do and it will hurt. Yeah. I mean, I guess toddlers don't go and bite you as a human being, but dogs do because toddlers I mean, have hands. Maybe they do. Well, maybe I don't know. know. But it's the same thing with like feet and ankles and, yeah. and or they'll grab onto your, your sleeve of your sweater and poke holes in it. And mm. That's just, don't wear nice clothes. If you have a puppy, don't have anything <laughs> nice out. I think that was like the puppy proving. Don't have nice things out. Yeah. Don't have nice clothes on. Just wear the same pants Hide every single everything. day. everything. You yeah. have a, a walking piranha in yeah. your house. Exactly. <laughs> a land shark. I think a that's what they call it. land shark, yeah. yeah. That's what they call it. So yeah, that one's like kind of just, you know, not too much involved. That one, they'll just get over. You can't really train them growing their teeth out of them like you can with potty yeah. training it's just like that's well, just a can, phase they're going through yeah it's it's a phase like that's the thing like yeah. puppy blues and, and puppy time it's yes. just a phase yeah. that they go through they might relapse later yeah. on in life and you know what you'll miss it you will yeah. your dog and you won't miss like all of these really bad things but you'll like look at pictures of your dog as a little puppy and you're like oh my god it was, it was, she was so cute he was yeah. so cute Oh, I and think, then you remember. I think yeah. there's a reason why puppies look so cute because otherwise they wouldn't survive. That's true. If they weren't this cute, <laughs> like no one would want them. That's a very valid point. Yeah. They would be like, sense. no, I cannot deal with this. You are going back to wherever you yeah. came from. <laughs> but yeah, just because they're so cute and small and harmless to yeah. some extent, like it's a lot more tolerable yeah. to uh, to just get on with it, yeah. right? So on the topic of like the, the nipping and all of that, another kind of puppy blue cause or cause of the puppy blues is more than like chewing on things. So it's kind of like getting a bit past the, the teething phase, but they still exploring with their mouths and they're chewing everything from shoes to yeah. furniture to walls. clothing, walls. And that's <laughs> just, unfortunately, that can be trained. Not unfortunately. Fortunately, that can be trained out of them. That's them yeah. again, exploring with their mouths. That's them. Um, like kind of whether they're being bored, whether they want attention, whether they just like the feeling. And that is, I guess when they are teething, they do like the feeling mm. of biting onto something. And that's where training kind of comes in, in hand to 
redirect oh, yeah. that or get them to, and not having things lying around. Hey, you don't want your dog to chew your shoes, your Crocs that you just bought. They're mm-hmm. nice rubber squishy feeling. Don't have them lying out. Just like we said yeah. in the puppy proofing your home. But that is something that you will go to work. You will leave your dog out if you're not a smart person <laughs> and you'll come home and things will be destroyed. Yeah. And that's your own fault. Yeah. But that's the thing, if you can't supervise your dog at all times when they're out of their confined area, yeah. then, then yeah, you're going to really struggle well, because yeah. this it's is just fault. what's going to happen. They, they are going to eat things mm-hmm. like, and, and it's dangerous because they could ingest things that are small lying around and your dog could choke on it. Yeah. They could have upset stomach. Yeah. Like, No, it's true. And know? so that's just something that you need to realize that they will bite on things. They'll bite on the cords and random stuff. And, and you don't have to be upset. Them. Like don't get angry at them. Like you, you will get frustrated. And that's one of the mm. kind of caught, you know, puppy things is like, I'm frustrated and I'm stressed and you, that, that you'll get frustrated. Yeah. You'll get stressed. But again, well, it is just a phase if you, work on that. I mean, I guess puppies will chew things forever if you never stop them. Mm. If they think it's okay, they'll keep doing it. Yeah. You know? If it's there all the time, they'll keep doing it. Toilet paper was a big one, actually. Where yes. With Maple, she was like going for those toilet paper rolls. So we had to like put them so up high. it was so much fun yeah. to play with toilet paper. So that was something <laughs> that like, although it's not destroying things, but it's just leaving a mess. And it's like, and it was our fault. Like, I remember we, we left one lying out. Mm. And she would take it to like the bedroom. I remember she would take it yeah. to her bedroom and yeah, there yeah. would just be like, and she knew, and you were just like, Maple, you know, and she knew, and you don't like punish oh her gosh, or discipline her. I that's remember her, that. That's her own fault for having it lying around. But it's so funny because I remember us I just like feeling like, what What the hell do we do? How, yeah. how do we like get rid of this problem? Like she can't just be searching for toilet pa- paper every yeah. time, right? So we just started closing the bathroom door, yeah. you know? And then we and trained like, her. We just, yeah. I, I remember I had a roll of toilet paper in my hand and I had a treat in another hand. And if she would go to the toilet paper, I'd just be like, no, pull it away, mm. go to the treat. Yes, she gets it. And mm. I was just, that helped with us. And now she doesn't look at it because she looks at it and be like, that's no fun. I don't get rewarded. Yeah. But if I don't touch the toilet paper, I get a treat. And then again, it's training. But yeah, that was a big one. And I remember we, we went through quite a few rolls of toilet paper. I don't yeah. even, where did we leave them for her to get them? I don't know. Cause she'd I, like, to, I think she'd like took it out of like the package. Like yeah. we had a, the, the bag of the package of toilet paper sitting on the floor. I think it was like sitting on the floor in a closet and then we left the closet open by accident and she somehow decides to steal a roll. And it's, it's cute. It's, you know what? I mean, it wasn't cute at the time. We were actually like pretty annoyed because it was such a mess. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Picking up a little piece of toilet paper. It's not fun, but yeah. But now you look at it fondly. Like, you know, I kind of miss it. Like it. You know, <laughs> the little terror. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's a big thing. And, and that's something that a lot of people struggle with. And I see a lot of those questions in Facebook groups. Oh, my dog is chewing on everything. It's like, well, don't Why let do them out of their sight. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't allow it and don't have these objects available for, for the dog to chew and pay attention. Mm. If something's lying out, if you can't hide your shoes. It's like, I'm sorry, but, but your life is going to change. Yeah. You're going to have to adjust your environment to that dog to make it bearable for both of you yeah. so that you don't lose things that you spend so much money on. And then you're going to get angry at your dog for no reason other than your own yeah. negligence. Yeah. It's like so, they don't know better, especially yeah. as puppies. So it's just something that they, they do deal with it. Yeah. That was like a big realization. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, we were first time we were part of the 70% for sure. Oh yeah. So it's something that we didn't know. Uh, the next one, one we didn't really go through, but it was like barking and excessive barking. Yes. We didn't really, she didn't bark for like six months. I didn't, I didn't even think, think she, knew she how, could. Yeah, yeah. She could. Now she's starting to. So we have a delay. I feel like she learned that behavior from Other like doggy maybe. daycare and yeah, things. Maybe. I don't know. That's true. 
But yeah, that so that's a big one. Again, we don't have personal experience with that, but yeah. a lot of people have the barking and the noise. And I see this in Facebook groups, people that live in like townhouses or condos yeah. or apartments and they go out. That's crazy because they can't get evicted. And it's yeah. like how, you know, and it, it can get overwhelming and frustrating because you have your landlord on your case, yeah. right? Being like, you need to control your dog. You have your neighbors on your case. And it's like, I understand where where that frustration can come from. But unfortunately, the only thing you can do is train that behavior out yeah. of them, right? If you don't know how to train it out of them, seek help, Yeah, right? I mean, everything, I think all of our episodes have to do with training. Mm. Everything goes down to being proactive as a, as a dog parent and training and working, yeah. whether directly with your dog or working with a trainer that's working with your dog. But it's just something that... They do it and they do it for tons of reasons. They do it because they're excited. They do it because they're bored. They do it because yeah. they want something. They're scared. They attention. Like there's so many different reasons. Yeah. And if you keep letting them do it, they'll keep doing it. It's that yeah. simple. So it's, it goes back to, to training that and learning like why are they barking and then dealing with it. But especially as a puppy, they don't, they don't know any better. Yeah. They just, that's you know, how like they, they communicate. That's talk. not, that's what they, they that's, that's how, how they communicate yeah. when they, when I know Maple like alert barks now and it's her letting us know, hey, there's someone approaching our house from outside. <laughs> that's just what she does. And it's sometimes annoying, but it's just like, that's what else are they supposed to do? Come up it, and tap at you, paw at your leg and be like, hey. Yeah. It is look annoying outside. and we are obviously working on yep. it as much as we can all the time. It's not as annoying to the point where I'm like so frustrated yeah. and angry and I'm like, you know, I don't know what to do with you yeah, anymore. Yeah, but it's more alert bark. She yeah. doesn't, uh, she doesn't attention bark. And I think there are some dogs, especially like terriers and stuff. They mm. do a lot more attention barking. And if someone's not used to that noise, especially oh, yeah. if you've even never had a, a baby or it cries all the time. When you've never had a dog yeah. before. Or, or like a dog, or you had a dog as a kid or growing up, but they didn't bark. And that's the thing is people kind of look at this new dog they got to the same to the dog they had as as a kid that their parents had but you can't you cannot compare the two mm. at all so it's funny how you talk about like the comparison now because i remember like i had a major puppy blue feeling when we did a puppy class and okay. we had to take our dogs out for a walk downtown and I was seeing all these dogs uh, walking nicely in downtown and we were really struggling. Oh yeah, Maple was a maniac. Yeah, she, pulling and like, she didn't understand what we were doing. She yeah, was like pulling. We were doing yeah. loose leash walk, walking training, but in she a distracting environment. She was all over the place, like honestly. She was I like remember. spinning around and I'm like, oh my God, that was hot. Yeah, you, I remember you were frustrating and then yeah. it's like embarrassing because you yeah. have these other and dogs. and I was embarrassed and I was comparing myself to these other dogs. And in, in my mind, now thinking about it, I'm like, well, but we've never in downtown with yeah. her. And we've never exposed her to yeah. it. It's the first time we she's seen that. We live in suburbs yeah. where, you know, not, not much is happening yeah. around here. And we just thrown her into this environment, which is way too overstimulating. Yeah. And I wanted her to act the same way as those other dogs who, who might have lived in that like, live area. in that area. Possibly, yeah. And I'm like, that was unreasonable. That's like, so true. I forgot about I that. I should have not been embarrassed. Yeah. I should have had a little bit more compassion yeah. towards her and me at the same time. Well, and every dog learns at their own pace. Some yeah. dogs can learn. But as a thing, she was learning, like, she was really good with uh, drop it and leave yeah. it. Like, way better than all the other dogs. But, yeah. I mean, we practiced that earlier. Exactly, because we, we practiced But we couldn't it. practice we, we, walking, loose leash walking downtown yeah. when she's 12 weeks old as well. Like, yeah. loose, loose leash walking takes a very long time, yeah. to be honest. So... But like she was, yeah, she was one of the worst dogs that was Yeah, walking. for the walking, I remember that. And we were right behind, like basically dragging her. Yeah. And yeah, I was just like, what have we done? Yeah. Like, is this reality? Is this what my life's going yeah. to be like? Was, Are we not going to be able to yeah. take her out for walks? Because this is how she's behaving. And it's like, it's realizing that things take time. Yes. 
and we just have to keep doing it and keep messing up all the time in order to learn because that's the most annoying thing like when people take the dogs out when the puppies and you know they're all over the place they don't know how to walk and they just quit they don't take the dogs out for walks yes, anymore because that that one two three five experiences were bad and they think yeah, well they're never because you learn. get frustrated yeah. you get annoyed and you feel like it's not going anywhere but if you don't practice yep. walking so, them then yep. they're just never gonna yep. learn that's and so then true. you're gonna have a full-grown dog that's three years old and they still don't know how to walk properly yep. so now looking now back, that's embarrassing yeah so looking back at how maple was we're gonna do an example now now how she walks more recently like we we dog sit and dog board a little bit mm. and you take some of the the dogs yeah. you have out and maple is like an angel compared to these dogs that are three or four and yeah. they're nightmares to walk so yeah. it's funny that like you look back at when she was 12 weeks old and where she in a puppy class and yeah. she was the problem. She was embarrassing. And now you're like, she's perfectly fine. But this dog we're watching is embarrassing and a nightmare and is just all over the place. So it's, yeah. it's funny that like, yeah, that kind of shows if you can, because we worked on it every mm. day, pretty much. And the other yeah. one, it was like extremely cold out. Yeah. And then you ask these owners like, oh, do you like take your dog out for these walks? And it's like, yeah, I do. But you know, this is just what she does. Yeah. She's, she just she melts just down on the yeah. floor and starts sniffing every single inch of the ground. Yeah. And, you know, and they talk about it as if it's normal because it is for them now, yeah. right? It, it, it's something that they decided it's not a problem for them. Yeah. And they don't take that dog out for many walks because of that issue yeah. that she just cannot focus on walking. And you know what? That That's okay for them. Yeah. But it, it wasn't okay for me, which is why I worked on it and which yeah. is why we are where we are now. Um, so so that's the thing is like identifying these issues that are causing you to have puppy blues. Well, yeah. So that's the takeaway of this whole story of yeah. you will go through hard times. Mm. But- those are just short times, just, but, yeah. if, but if you don't work on it, you're going to always yeah. go through hard times. Yeah. And that's what people do. It's not just like, it's going through these puppy blues, which can last like three, six, like, let's, I think it's like three to nine months or something like that until they're almost a year old. And, well, and then they had teenage years, which is a whole nother nightmare story. <laughs> but it's like, you can't just like put up with it and be like, okay, well, I know this is only going to last three months. And then like the, 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 chew, the teething will stop the chew, but it, no, because if you don't actively participate and be proactive and like training some, your dog, it won't stop. Yeah. Those puppy blues will become adult blues. I don't know <laughs> if that's a term, but it is officially now. And no, they won't you stop. might actually give up on your dog yeah. at that time because you'll be just so frustrated. Your whole house will be ruined. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't and, and have this is, over. This you won't is when take the people dog out. decide it's it's those teenage years. Yeah. Like once the puppy years have gone and you've gone so long with dealing with puppy behavior and then you don't proactively work on fixing them that's when people go oh i think i made a mistake yeah. i have to give this dog back yeah. and it happens during teenage years yeah. right when yeah, they go those, into um, that stage there's after that puppy. there's that meme and it's done with a bunch of different dog breeds but it shows like a puppy of a thing it says like zero to 12 months it's just a cute little puppy and then 12 months to like 36 months it shows like a velociraptor <laughs> dinosaur yeah. and then from like three plus years it shows like the adult version dog but that's literally what it is it's yeah. so true it's like you have a little psychopath dinosaur or a yeah. land shark or whatever, you know, you want to call it. And then that's just something you have to deal with. Because it's like puppy life is hard because you aren't sleeping. There's so much supervision. By the time they hit one and stuff, like one and a half, not as much supervision. But they are still a nightmare. They That's when they to. like enter, like I'm going to test your boundaries. Yeah. And so that's what everyone says. It's like you're going to work hard for two years. But once your dog hits like that two to three years old and you put in that effort, you will have the most perfect dream dog the dog that you thought mm -hmm. you were going to get when yeah. you wanted a puppy in the first place yeah. you're not getting that dog at six months old no. you're getting that dog at two to three years old yeah unfortunately yeah and if you don't want to wait that long then then don't get a dog please don't the rescues are full don't <laughs> return them but yeah so i guess the next the next kind of cause yeah. of puppy blues oh yeah we're still going yeah. through that <laughs> i know we got a bit <laughs> One yeah. of the things also that can cause a puppy blue um, for you is the fact that your dog will 
guard their resources. Yeah, like and, resource guarding, yeah. Yeah, so some people might not know what resource guarding is. So what that is, is when you are, when you give your dog food or a toy or a stick or anything that is valuable in their it mind. It works for people too. Yeah, people too. Like, like you as a single dog yeah. owner and you get a new boyfriend, girlfriend. And they, if you take that thing away from them, they will snap. Or and you can't take it away from yeah. them because they'll start growling at growling, you. Growling, snapping, or even biting. Mm -hmm. Like it's a very common thing. It's scary. Yeah. If you have never dealt with that before and it's your first dog and, you know, it happens, it it's really scary. Do you remember? We practiced that with Maple. I remember that. It was down here. We were practicing getting her to like leave it and being able to like take things mm -hmm. away from her, not like rip things out of her mouth or anything like that. And it was like a bully stick or whatever. And I wore, I, I went and put on like a winter glove because I was like <laughs> yeah. terrified to put my hand near yeah. her face. Cause, and it might, she would have just done a little thing, but I didn't want that. And I didn't want to like get hurt. Yeah. And we worked on it. We worked on, we taught her to like leave it. We taught her to, to drop it. That, like kind that of stuff. was one of the most important, I think, commands that yeah. we introduced fairly early on like I remember in puppy classes she she already had it nailed yeah. because we were we practicing started that really yeah. early do you remember that post on Facebook that six-month-old dog you think we both saw that and they were talking about I can't get things and someone's like did you teach your dog a leave it command and oh yeah yeah well, yeah she said like oh, why he's so, only six months should yeah. I teach that oh my god Yes. Yeah, so, so what you are talking about is this Facebook post, which I came across recently, and it was about a woman who had a cavapoo, and this cavapoo was six months old, and she only just realized. I'm like, oh my god, six months, and you've only just realized I mean, this is the problem. Unless you got the dog a week ago, but yeah. yeah. Uh, that this dog will growl and uh, snap at her when she's trying to take away things from their mouth, which is totally normal, yeah. by the way. Like that behavior put things is, in mouth all the time too. Yeah. is completely natural for a dog to do. It's, it's something you need to train. So the comment underneath was, you know, have you taught that dog how to leave it? And she just replied to it being like, do I have to? Yeah. Is that something <laughs> you, I need? My dog's like, only six months. Like what, you got to wait a year? Yeah. It's like, do you yeah. want to wait until that dog's completely ruined? Like, yeah. But like, that's what they do. It's part of their instincts too, of like their, their food, it's yeah. toy. This is mine. I don't want to share, you know. And it's important to, so yeah, training once yeah. again, because your dog will go into adulthood thinking this is okay yeah. and they will bite someone. Especially if you have kids that come yeah. and want to approach a dog where they're and eating a bone or whatever. if your bites someone, they can be put down. Yeah. And so, and it, that takes a lot of work too, like I said, and it was not an easy thing to train. Like I literally wore a big, big winter glove just to <laughs> be careful. And then we taught it a different way. We, we got her to like leave it and come away from the thing. Yeah. So instead of going to her and trying to grab it from her. And then once she was far enough away, Get her to like sit, stay, and then and then reward and pick her it up. with yeah, that and then thing. go and take because we do that with the bone. Yeah, like when she gets like the like actual like meat bones because mm. she'll chew that thing for twenty four hours straight. To be honest, we need yeah. to stop. Um, so that's what we have but to do. Like if you are a new dog parent and you are not aware of this, you need to know that your dog will not be happy if you take away something yeah. from their mouth yeah. and don't exchange it for something else. Yeah. At it's least to just, start with, yeah. Until they get older and they understand, but it's just, yeah. and again, right back to it all. You have to, you have to work through all of these puppy blue problems. You can't just sit there and be like, they're only going to last three months. It's only going to last six months. It's like their potty training won't just, they won't just randomly know to go outside. Yeah. You have to work on it every day. The but I can also relate this to kids too. Like imagine if you have a toddler and they're playing with their favorite toy yeah. and suddenly you take it away yeah, from them. Yeah, they'll start crying. Yeah, they're yeah. going to have a meltdown. Oh yeah, that's so true. It's the same thing. They're not going to bite you, right? Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> that's true. But it, it's, it's, it's the same. It's not even toddlers. It's teenagers. You see all the yeah. things like parents take the, the video games away or they yeah. have a can melt down tantra and yeah. it's just yeah that's that's a valid nobody likes something they're enjoying being taken away from them yeah whether it's a puppy an adult dog a toddler a teenager an adult human being nobody mm -hmm. wants that 
Do you know what I mean? So work on it. Yeah. Work on doing it the right way. Yeah. You know? So these, I guess, are the most common causes that make people feel like they're, you know, struggling, yeah. they're overwhelmed. And also one other thing that can cause puppy blues is that sudden realization that you no longer have the independence Yes. that you used to have. Yes. That can cause you to feel like. Well, yeah, you can't. Uh, all sorts of feelings. Just go out out of nowhere anymore. Yeah. I mean, unless you have someone else that's home. Mm. Like we're talking about you as an individual and one mm. dog. Or even as a couple or a family, you can't just like leave your dog yeah. all day. Eventually, you can probably leave them. Like we did talk about that before, like up to you know, mm. six to eight hours. But yeah, it's it's knowing that. Well, I'm out, but I need to get back to feed my dog. Like, okay, fine. You feed them an hour late is okay. But if you, you know, mm. it, they probably won't die, of course. But it's that. <laughs> but you get that feeling of like, I can't be out anymore because my dog needs to have dinner. And now I'm like sad that I have to go home. Or even guilty. Yeah, like guilty. feeling yeah, that's guilty the word I wanted that to use. you yeah. are out enjoying yourself and your dog is stuck at home probably missing you because yeah. the pack animals they always miss you is just what yeah. they do <laughs> but then it's not going out like and people still have their jobs you know when with maple and uh, us we were home for the most part i was gone well after the first like two weeks i was gone maybe two two days a week three days a week mm -hmm. nights and you were gone one day a week and it, and although that was all we were gone it was still hard it was still like yeah. you know what i mean it still didn't feel like and i was gone just to go to work not gone for fun. I, mm. I didn't, we didn't have social lives for like the first oh, no. year. <laughs> Training classes was literally our social life, Yeah, to be honest. And you're right. It's, it's people need to understand just like having a baby. I imagine you don't just go back to work. Well, that's what well, people do. They do just go back to work and they come home and their dog destroyed everything. But it's, it's understanding that you can't go on those long vacations, holidays mm. on a flight anymore Yeah, without putting your dog in boarding or something yeah. like that. And, yeah, people think, oh, puppies are cute. They're not much work. I just got to make sure they get fed. My kids will play with them a little bit and that's fine. Like, no. If that's what you think having a dog is, probably don't get one. Yeah. Or maybe certain breeds. We were talking about the breed group, so maybe some of them equal that. But yeah, you're right on that point. I guess the whole point of this kind of episode and this talk is just like understanding that you will go through these. You have to your expectations of what you think it will be like are not going to be the reality. You yeah. will feel anxious. You will feel stressed. You will regret. You'll want to return the dog. But it's about just, you know, working through that and finding help, mm. finding family members that can help you, finding friends that can help you, whether it's a family member that come and watches the dog for a few hours so you can go out guilt-free knowing your dog is home. It's about, you know, if you can afford it, paying for dog walkers, paying for, uh, doggy daycare. So then mm. you have that guilt-free life still. Yeah. And it's it's joining communities. I think that was a big one that we did. It's like finding communities that, especially if you have a specific breed as well, finding, I mean, we're in yeah. a few Toller Facebook groups because people know exactly what those dogs are like. Like Toller's yeah. in there screaming. You know, we yeah. never heard it until we started hearing it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like <laughs> I have some questions and they, they know answers to because they've also gone through the same thing. So yeah. it's finding people that. Finding people that also dealt with yeah. the same or similar yeah. situations as you have with the same breed, especially because not all breeds are, are the same yeah. and act the same, right? But it's also, I think with puppy blues, People will ask you probably like, how, how long does it last? Like, when is the end of it? And I think it's about focusing on the positive yeah. and focusing on being, um, on the progress that you make yeah. in. Like, I know I had my puppy blues and I was getting frustrated and anxious and guilty. And there were times when I was genuinely regretting my decision. Yeah. I was like, you know, this is the dog that I wanted for such a long time. Yeah. And it, like, why is this so hard? Yeah. Right. But. Because you don't see that. That's a problem. Yeah. You don't see that on, you know, the internet. You don't yeah. see that on social media sites. But you see like the odd training thing, but you see them behaving. You yeah. see like, 
here's how to train your dog to yeah. do these things. You don't see what they did before that, which is mm. why they needed that training. And, and that's the problem. People don't, even as the puppy we went through, it's like we never saw anything on the internet about them having explosive diarrhea all over the house. People don't share that. That's gross. Like <laughs> I did should. not think that was going to be a thing. Like yeah. I remember that. I was like, oh my God. Like this is disgusting. I didn't <laughs> think that changing a dog's diet can have such a massive yeah. effect on their stomach. And, and as a new everything. dog owner, you don't raise, you'll learn this over time, but you're mm. not going to read every textbook and mm. watch a hundred hours of YouTube videos before yeah. you get a dog. You'll do a little bit of research, but yeah. not that degree. So, but yes. So I had those feelings yes. and like, I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah. I think it's normal to go through that. Um, but the thing is, like, I'm not a quitter either. Yes, you're so not. it's just like, it's kind of taking that on a chin yeah. and looking for solutions rather than dwelling too long on the negative yeah. and just trying to find answers and, you know, just putting that effort into training. That's probably the, the best way is realizing that you are doing the best that you can. Yeah. It will take time. It is hard. And let's not dwell too much on, on the negative side. Yeah. Let's focus on actually improving and the progress yeah. that we make. Yeah, dogs aren't being jerks on purpose. Yeah. They're not, they're not like teenagers that are rebelling mm. on purpose. And, and it's such a great feeling. Like yeah. once you start noticing these like small little changes and small little progress, it's like, Yes. Like but then you look back just like now, <laughs> we look back at Maple being a puppy and we remember all like the fun, cute things. Yeah, the whole toilet paper thing, but you look back at it and think it's like, oh yeah, that was so silly. Like we're looking at it in like more of a positive yeah. outlook than like, oh, that was such a horrible time to go through. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that was kind of, and so you'll remember like the fun things you did with your puppy, yeah. the milestones you did, the first time you gave them like the, the first time we gave Maple an apple, I literally remember that. Bitter, she was yeah. like so excited. And I mean, we, we have it recorded, but I don't have to watch the video because I remember that. Yeah, You're not going to remember all the hard times. And then that's why you'll get a second dog and a third mm. dog because you'll see where the dog comes to and then you'll get that second dog and it's going to happen to us yeah. and we're going to forget <laughs> how hard it was. We'll be like with another dog also in the picture that we have to like also keep occupied. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's for another episode yeah, yeah, why you shouldn't get two dogs at the same time. Yes. <laughs> but it is, it's just, it's just, uh, getting through this and, and seeking help. Like that's what most of the questions are in a lot of these training Facebook yeah. groups, puppy Facebook groups. They are the same questions over and over again. Yeah. It's like, I'm feeling so frustrated and so angry. And, and some people just need that, that reassurance. Just like, Okay, like you have problems. We all have gone through these problems. Yeah. We all, we've been there, we've done it. That's why we're in this group, why we're in this community. Like, let's help each other, yeah. right? And some people will give you tips. And some you people will say, oh man, my dog was way worse and that will make you feel better. But then, okay, it was yeah. not that bad. But it's, yeah, it's it's also about like not comparing yourself yeah, because we, we all have different dogs different dogs learn in, in different mm -hmm. ways and different timelines. And we, we can't look at one dog exactly. and be like, my dog is better at this, but not so good well, at that. Some dog breeds like, are prone to bark more. So you can't yeah. compare that to our dog. That's not prone to bark. Mm. Our dog is annoying as crap with whining. Yeah. So you can't compare that to a dog. That's just quiet all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and that's just something that's, when you pick a dog, whether it's from a rescue, whether it's from a breeder, know what to expect. Yes. You know? It's like setting those expectations. Like in my mind, it's actually better to have expectations very low. Like imagine the worst possible yeah. scenario that can happen, that you're going to have this, the worst dog yeah. that you can imagine. I don't right? know. What were our expectations? I don't remember. I think a little bit like better than- I feel like I was than, just so nervous and yeah. excited at the same time because it was our first dog yeah. and I wanted to be prepared, which is why we have read a couple books yeah. and, you know, we started reading up on the breed and things yeah, like that. Yeah, watching and, YouTube videos. 
Yeah. Which is what you do. You don't go see a trainer before you have a dog. You yeah. just learn what you can. There's amazing well, like, resources out there. I, I feel like no matter how much preparation and research you do, you're still not going to have that real experience yeah. until you bring that puppy well, home. it's like, you know, resources like listening to this podcast yeah. is a learning resource. But our experience is going to be different than yours. The guests we have on, their experience is going to be different than your experience. Yeah. But it's like understanding there's such a variety. Mm. of dogs out there, temperaments, owners, and just be the best dog I mean, parent you can be. Yeah. I mean, it's also, I guess, important to highlight that puppy blues don't just happen to puppies. Yeah. It, it can also happen to a dog that you just rescued. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's that it's the adjustment in yeah. your life that happens, right? It's it's the time when you both get to know each other yeah. and you're trying to figure out where, w- what's the routine, where yeah. do we all stand and, Where you does know. the dog fit in your life? What are yeah. the boundaries? You know, those kind yeah. of things. And and you won't know until you- Do it. Do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Couldn't make the word, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just, yeah, seek, seek help if you yeah. need to. And be proactive, have patience and yep. understanding towards your dog. Yeah. And just yeah, go through it. And go through it and don't focus on the on the negative things. Focus yeah. on how you can actually fix these things. Yeah. That's I think so true. And then you'll have the most perfect dog you can ever yeah. have wanted. But you can't for free. It involves and, and time. And don't give up, right? Free. Yeah. Like Yeah, please don't give up. Mm. I think that's what we see post too, and they're like, Oh, I've had this dog for six months and I can't handle they're just not fitting my lifestyle. Like I'm gonna have to give it away. And it's like, give it away and things like that. You shouldn't have got a dog in the first place if that's if that's your attitude towards mm. things. But oh well. Yeah. You can't yeah, everyone's different. Everyone's different and yeah. Sometimes there's an issue with like kids and yeah. You know, things happen, right? So it's it's understandable that sometimes people will have that need to return the dog. But I feel like I think it from, happens more with rescues, not as much with puppies. Yeah. From like behavior standpoint, where your dog's just not behaving in a way that you really want it to, like don't just give up already. Yeah. Like do seek that help. Yeah. It takes first, months. Months. Right. And then yeah, just be patient and yeah. proactive and keep doing it until you physically can't anymore. Yeah. And you're like, right. Okay. This is like my ultimate last resort. Yeah. Um, That's so true. That's true. So I think that wraps up this episode. Mm-hmm. Kind of talks about the puppy blues, kind of what causes them. We didn't go into depth of like how to solve these problems. I think each of them is their own kind of training resource. And again, there's tons of information out there. Uh, we we're talking about joining communities. We have an awesome community for you to join called the Woofy Squad. It is linked um, below, or you can just search it on Facebook that you can join and ask questions, um, you know, whether yeah. we can help or some of the guests we've had on are in the group too. So whether it's trainers and vets, they can give you feedback. Um, so yeah, please yeah. join. You can ask questions there if you like, if you're really struggling with your puppy. Yeah. We can reassure you that it's normal behavior yeah. and it's nothing to worry about. Yeah. It just needs a little bit of work, yeah. which is not impossible. It's definitely doable. Yeah. And yeah. That's it. If you know someone that's about to get a puppy, share this episode with them because this is something that, I mean, I wish we knew, to be honest, this yeah. much before. So, or... Yeah, definitely share that with anyone that you know who has a puppy and is going through puppy blues or is going to get one just so they know what to expect. Same with the puppy proofing your home. That episode as well kind of goes well with this one. Uh, So don't forget to subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Follow us and rate it on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, iHeartRadio. I don't know. We're everywhere. Everywhere you listen (laughs) to podcasts, wherever you're listening to this or watching this. Yes, we are. Yeah, just uh, because that really helps us to spread the word. And that's it for this episode. Make puppy blues normal again. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Puppy blues are normal. (laughs) That's it for this episode. So thanks for everyone for watching or listening and we'll see you in the next one. See ya. Bye for now.